Well, hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Ten Forward Weekly. Uh, for those of you tuning in for the very first time, my name is Mike Fadum, also known as Ambassador Kell. I am your community manager, and we are joined this week for the very first time by Mr. Jonathan Herlash. It is Herlash, right? I just forgot to ever ask you to pronounce your name. Oh, it's Herlash. Herlash. Pretty. Close. I was really close. It's a tough one. I've been I... writing it for like four, five, six months now, and I realize yeah. I've never said it out loud until this very moment. It hits that sweet spot where no one gets it right, but no one gets it so wrong that it confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that one A, man. It's so yeah, different. Yeah. It's so many different languages. You know, that's actually the Americanized version. I'm oh, yeah? told several generations back it was like hairlock, and they're like, we, we should change it to fit in, and then they missed. But <laughs> it's still it's close. close. I like it's it. It's close. You know, it's <laughs> right there. Uh, well, welcome to the stream. Thank you very Thank much you. for joining us. Um, so tell us a little bit. Uh, you're uh, new to the STO team. And by new, we mean you've been here for... Oh, God. How long has it been? Six or seven months? Something like the that. The mysterious yeah. voice off camera you hear is Jeremy, who is here <laughs> to help us with chat questions. But Curlin's certainly, here. certainly <laughs> not here to, to appear on stream. Uh, so everybody say hi, Jeremy. <laughs> who is unintentionally flicking us off right now. <laughs> <laughs> he was scrat you were scratching your nose uh, with the middle finger. <laughs> I was wondering if it was intentional at first. All right, anyway. Uh, so, sorry, you've been here about six months, you said? Sounds like. All right, cool. Um, what was your background before you got to STO? Let's see. Uh, I've been in the games industry for, God, almost eight years now. Nice. A um, few different places. Uh, first job was a little PvP MMO startup. Uh, never ended up shipping. Huh. And I was on um, League of Legends for six years or so, okay. and then briefly uh, at Wargaming Seattle working on an unannounced project that didn't end up shipping, and okay. now I'm here. All right, cool. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, so we're, we're here to talk about uh, the Discovery Legends reputation, uh, okay. which is your first reputation that you've ever made in the, for the game, right? That is quite so. Yes, there was a you, lot to learn. Yeah, because <laughs> you worked on the did you work, worked on the Tier 6 rep extensions before this, right? That or was that Matt. before your time. That was Matt. Okay. Yeah. That was before your time. All right. So yeah, this is your first time doing anything with a reputation, throwing you in the deep end with both feet. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, so for, on the off chance that there's somebody who's brand new to this game is tuning mm -hmm. into the stream, uh, what is a reputation? Ooh. So a <laughs> reputation is sort of a, it's a grouping of rewards that you get for working within a sort of a story theme. You're mm -hmm. in the fluff working for an organization to either improve their standing or your standing with them, improve their position in the galaxy, dealing with threats that they're either organized around confronting or things they're concerned with. In this case, it's uh, a bit of a look back at this discovery period in the history of the galaxy that was so pivotal to shaping the world that we know today and understanding the people who have sort of like, in the case of Jula, like just sort of showed up and yeah. come back into the spotlight. Since a lot of those events were shrouded in secrecy and weren't fully disclosed, there isn't a lot of understanding about what actually went on. So the reputation is all about sort of sifting through the lessons of discovery and understanding the people that were involved. So it's uh, partially about then your captain sort of getting access to, um, uh, slight spoilers here, folks, but <laughs> the uh, the information that uh, uh, Spock deemed, you know, not talkaboutable on pra pain of treason and death and all of that jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> directly. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so what goes into creating a new reputation for the game? Oh, let's What's see. What's the process like? Well, first we come up with a sort of a theme, a uh, guiding light. In this case, it was, well, we wanted to do something that matched the show, but the show was set several hundred years before, so we had to <laughs> first confront that problem. And then it's sort of building up uh, some central themes. In this case, it's mechanical themes, uh, tanking for the space set, uh, critical hits for the alternate space set, and then um, melee combat for the ground set, which turned out to be prophetic because as Season 2 aired, Burnham... Repeatedly got involved yeah. in hand-to-hand -hand melee combat. So many fistfights. Very <laughs> gratifying. It's almost <laughs> like they uh, they said, "Hey, we've got Michelle Yeoh on the show. Maybe we should have her fight somebody." Yeah. a and couple of thousand. Times. I remember watching the uh, first season and seeing some of the fights that she got into, and yeah. thinking, "Choreographers aren't cheap." That <laughs> looked very detailed. I bet they're going to do more of that. <laughs> <laughs> also, I feel like if you've got Michelle Yeoh, she's just like because like I worked on a, a martial arts film at one point that was. Um, uh, had a Power Ranger on it, and right. uh, the two of them, the way they choreographed a fight was not thinking about it in advance. They would get on set, turn on the cameras, and be like, okay, uh, I'm going to kick you twice in the face, and then I'm going to do a backflip, and then you're going to punch me. Okay, great. Ready, three, two, one, go. And they do that All segment right. and be like, oh, okay, that's that's how much you needed to work on that? Great. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I imagine that gives... Power Ranger. 
Uh, what? Chat needs to know which Power Ranger. Oh, Chat, Chat needs to know which Power Ranger. Uh, it was Johnny Youngbosch, uh, who was the um, second Black Ranger, uh, and also the voice of Vash the Stampede, if you're into anime at all. All right. Um, yeah, he also has a band called I Shine. You should check it out. Um, okay. But anyway, yeah, so Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, so, so mechanics, uh, themes, uh, tanking, crit, melee combat, and then um, like the sort of lore theme. And in this case... We decided to go with uh, something based more on the characters than based on like a, a section of technology. It's a bit of a departure. We're probably just going to leave it within that reputation, uh, but it we think it fits well because the show is so character driven. Like yeah. so many strong personalities on the show. Um, it was that or like mycelium was something we thought about, but it's not going to have a heavy presence in the universe in like our current yeah. world uh, current timeline it's not something you can easily bring to ground combat so it's it's a little bit forked there so we ended up deciding to go with the personalities cool. instead so talking about the mechanics a bit um, mm -hmm. was it what was the reason behind say like focusing on tanking and critical hits was it we, uh, we feel like there's a hole in the, the meta that we need to fill here was there just we think this stuff is cool Tanking was the one that had the best confluence of everything. It wasn't just that the we felt that tanks could use a little bit of love in the current meta. It was also that when you're fairly new to the game and you're just reaching the upper end, there's this cliff, usually shaped like a Dideridex, where you get in there <laughs> and just get domed by torpedoes and die suddenly. Yeah. Or wander into some more core breaches and die suddenly. So having something that's um, fairly uh, a new piece of content that comes out and draws a lot of attention, hopefully guiding people into a little bit tankier of a path so that they can survive some of these things, yeah. and then containing a few little specific, like there's literal torpedo damage resistance in this set <laughs> the, to help people survive some of those moments. For and example, at the same Zen time, Kathy torpedoes during gravity kills. Oh God! <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> it's fine. Just, just, just get the molecules, guys. Anyway, sorry. You were saying. <laughs> uh, what about the critical hit focus? Mm. That was one where I, I felt there was not necessarily a hole in the meta because there's no shortage of uh, builds that have a fair amount of critical hits. But there was an opportunity to hook into something that was already popular and drive a little bit of gratification on it, uh, attaching like cool specific outputs. Like one of the traits cleanses a debuff when you score a critical hit. The okay. set gives you a little stacking bonus when you score a crit. Just sort of like tying it together. Because most of the crit hit builds that I saw used it as a means of amplifying damage that was already there rather than accepting crit as sort of its own thing. So trying to like build it up a little bit. Okay. And then melee ground combat we saw as an opportunity to take a pass at a system that's historically struggled a little bit. There's a lot yeah. of like ear flicks to using it, uh, toe traps on the ground that interrupt your movement, enemies that will not stop backing out of combat when you're yeah. trying to get to them. Um, so we saw a way to. I remember. Sort I don't know if this was for the rep, but there was at some point um, yeah. where you uh, you came up to my desk and said, "Do we have anything in the game where if you click on a melee power, you just automatically close the distance?" And I was like, "Yes, here are all the swords I use." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that with the root on it. Yeah. So now they can't just like back right back out of melee. They yeah, get yeah. stuck there for several seconds while you can engage them in melee. Yes. Yeah. Actually, have them fist bite you. <laughs> Fight me, you cowards. Um, exactly. So you're designing the Discovery Legends rep. Mm -hmm. um, to t sort of tie it in with the different characters. Was the process that you picked kind of, you started with the characters and picked what powers might go with them, or did you have kind hmm. of the power set up already and then said, okay, this sort of fits with Tilly or this sort of fits with Saru? It was driven more by wherever the best inspiration was, which typically came from the characters, but not yeah. always. So with Crit, we started, okay, we want to do something with Crit, where do we put it? Oh, Lorca. Like, yeah. space Crit, like, who else? Yeah. Like, the... He was all about choosing the exact right moment to do something very decisive. It worked very nicely. For uh, ground combat, we started with like this idea of, well, there there might be a way to build a set that avoids some of the problems that ground combat has. Yeah. Um, and then Burnham, the, that was sort of a separate inspiration where there was the ground combat inspiration, and then there was, well, what do we want to do with Burnham? And it turns out that most of her moments, especially in the first season, came on the ground rather than yeah. necessarily on the bridge of the Discovery. So those two just kind of like naturally came together, and then as the season came on and it became clear that she was very proficient with her fists, that worked out. Um, it was also the costume that we knew we wanted oh, to use. Oh, yes, yes. We knew we wanted that awesome space armor Eva, yeah. Eva suit that she uses. Like, even from the very first episode, that thing looks fantastic. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Um, well, speaking of which, do we want to uh, hop into game real quick and take a look sure at some thing. of this stuff? All right. 
Um, oh, you know what I forgot? Before we do any of that, I forgot to look at fan art for this week. I don't want to forget that. I've been forgetting it for like three weeks. Would you like mm-hmm. to look at some fan art? Yes, me, I would. Excellent. Uh, we get uh, submissions from people every week, and they're always pretty exciting. Nice. Uh, all right, so first up, DrexCon sends us, sends us this excellent close-up of... I don't know if it's the Crossfield or the Mirror Crossfield. Uh, it's definitely one of the two. Um, if you look very carefully right there, you can see the bridge <laughs> through that little porthole that Donnie made. Nice. It's very cool. Uh, he also Very sent cool. us this shot of uh, one of my favorite spots in the game where you just have a bird of prey hanging out in the sky overhead. Always the best, because it's the best ship in Star Trek. It's a lot of looming. That's some yes. quality yes. looming. Yes, some, some definite <laughs> looming right there. I don't know what map this is, and I need to know, so chat, tell me tell me what map this is. That and is then pretty. Uh, I'm going to take lots of pictures there, like forever. Like, you're going to see a lot of screenshots there from now on. Mysterious uh, voice? <laughs> chat, chat, chat. My visuals are delayed. Ah, uh, right. And blue one? Yeah, uh, it is a purple and blue one. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what that that's is. That's okay. Uh, lots of people mm. are saying uh, they th- that's a good question. Uh, so no one knows yet. All right. Well, someone Fair will tell much. me, and then Jeremy will tell me what somebody said. We're trying this new thing where someone sits in a corner and tells me what chat is saying rather than me having to look at chat. Uh, we'll see how it works. Uh, All right. Uh, Alistair Morton sent in this shot of a bunch of different versions of the Constitution, at least two that I see, uh, flying out into space. Um, It's pretty cool. Jordan Colley made, uh, what's his name? Oh, God. Uh, Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo in the game, yep. (laughs) Sent us a bunch of pics, but this was my favorite. (laughs) Somebody's saying New Kittimer, and that might be correct. New Kittimer? Okay. Maybe New Kittimer in the future. Yeah. Uh, Mira Rango oh, right. says, "Oh, high mysterious voice." I just I wanted to know the, the peaceful same. version. <laughs> where, uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yes. All right, Stu seventeen oh one sent us this cool shot of. So they described it as the mirror cross field, but with the prime cross field skin, but with the open back port of the mirror cross field. Uh, so hanging out at Starbase One. All right, looking super dope. Uh, Shane Hoover sent us <laughs> this awesome shot nice. of. Um, mm. I like the color comp on Yeah, this isn't one. that cool? Yeah, blue and orange. Nice. Coming soon to a theater near yeah, you. Right? <laughs> In a world where there are only two colors. <laughs> on every summer movie poster. Uh, Sir Boulevard sent us this awesome ship oh, of two nice. of our most... Two, awesome shot of two of our most popular recent ships. The uh, Baran and the... Oh my gosh, my brain just shut down. That's good. I'm a community manager who came running the <laughs> ship we just put on sale like three months ago. Opposite the brand? Uh, yeah, opposite the brand. The coach? No. No. The, uh, sorry, the one that was... The Gagarin? Gagarin. Yeah, Thank you. That's it. The Garin. Not the Gargarin, as Mike often said in the past. Yeah, I feel that like there's wrong. a Baran Baran joke in there, but I can't mm-hmm. quite... Mm-hmm. We'd have to lip sync it. Was that Duran Duran? Yeah, that <laughs> was Duran Duran. Or was that Duran? I don't know. Anyway... Mm. I don't know things about Duran Duran, yeah. other than the name. <laughs> uh, and Garth sent us this awesome ship of uh, a crossfield, or a mirror crossfield, hanging out in, I think, no, fluidic space. Oh, yeah. I was going to say the Badlands, but that's wrong. I mean, they are pretty bad lands. It's true. Uh, and this is uh, the Captain's Table solar system, which we've been um, having some oh. talks about recently. Uh, nice. Yeah, there's I some mean, stuff. Why? Right, well, <laughs> kind of. Kind of. I went there the other day, because I've been hearing you know these these talks for years about, like, this thing exists, but no one would use it. And I'm like, well, why doesn't anybody use it? And I finally walked around the captain's table to see what all was there, and there's nothing there. There's, we got we got to add some stuff. We got to add a ton of stuff. Luckily, Andre was on board with that, so we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, Brett Klein sent us this awesome ship of the uh, actually the Cardenas class, I think, um, uh, flying through through hyperspace. Might also be at the captain's table. And also, of course, uh, now you're new to the stream, so I have to introduce you to okay. Daddy Klingon. I see. He was dubbed see. that by Rose. I was just calling him Hot Klingon before that. Fair enough. <laughs> Here he is in the TOS era, lounging in a chair. Because they don't know. Commandingly lounging. Commandingly lounging. Well, and also, you know, in that century, they wouldn't know he was a Klingon. They'd just be like, "Look at this weird alien." Makes sense. Yeah. We don't talk about it. <laughs> it is a Klingon <laughs> thing. We do not discuss it. Uh, Caesar seventeen oh five sent us this awesome shot of, I think it's the Nimitz. Might not be the Nimitz. No, the Nimitz is a little tiny one. Um, I forgot what this one's called. It's one of the new Discovery ships. It's pretty. It looks cool. It's like a Miranda. Um, And this shot of the... uh, uh, I actually don't know where this is. Someone can tell me. but It's a giant glowing neon sign that says Shangdu, which is uh, the name of a city in China. Uh, I mean, the the station looks like Drozana. I think it might be Drozana. Uh, Nimbus, people are saying. It's Nimbus 3. Nimbus. Yeah, that's from the Nimbus arc. And apparently that's the Europa. The of course. The color palette's making yes. me think Rosanna. It's got that, like, 
metallic y, orangey, yeah. yellowy. Uh, Mark Poolman nice. continuing the awesome screenshots of the Baran. Uh, this is the USS Ashigata. Um, and uh, uh, he did ask me in his email um, how we were coming along with the idea of having a screenshot artist on the stream or a couple of them to talk about him making good screenshots in Star Trek. Uh, I did, you're right, I had, did talk about that and then never did anything with it. So I'll reach out to a few people soon. Speaking of people I'd probably reach out to, hey, here's a oh. shot from Morishita, who Ooh. just does the coolest things. This that is, is That looks great. I believe this is the, the oh. Kelvin uh, Constitution. It might be the original. Um, and I don't know what ship is exploding slowly in the background, but that is such a great shot. She does, she does the coolest things. And then here is the um, Malakowski. Hey, I knew that one. Uh, flying through an awesome blue nebula. And we've got two shots from Ruin Fane. That was the right. motion picture refit. Connie. That was the motion picture All refit, right. Connie? Okay, good to know. Uh, the Crossfield, passing through a lovely planetary ring. <laughs> I got a brief vibe of nostalgia from that. There's an old Super Nintendo game that had a level that looks a lot like that. Like this one? Yeah, that's all. Metal Combat Falcon's Revenge. Metal Combat Falcon's Revenge. I am an old man. That is the most <laughs> Japanese name for a game it's that a I've ever heard. Very Japanese game, and it is very fun. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I wish they were random. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another one from Ruin Fane. Uh, this of the, um, I believe, the Cardenas? This is, yeah, this is the Cardenas. Uh, powering towards us at full speed. Uh, and then finally, yes. two shots from Duncan Idaho, uh, who wanted to let us know that it could also be pronounced Operation Reaper Pasta. Uh, <laughs> All right. And um, uh, we're going to be having some trouble collecting the elite marks for the Discovery reputation because <laughs> Lieutenant Tardigrade keeps stealing them and eating them all. All right, now let's look at stuff again. Seasoning. It does. They it's can't very digest true. the noodles. Tasty. They need something. I have a new trait slot. All right, so let's start by taking a look at this armor. So this was, uh, is this the one from the screen, Jeremy, or is this the one we made to go with it? Sorry, I'm delayed. Well, you put it on the character, so I assumed you would. Oh, know. yeah, yeah, this is the armor. Is it, but... Yeah. I well, said, is this the one from the, from the show or the one we made to match the one from the show? The and you said, we made. oh, this is the armor. Sorry, yeah. You see how that's unhelpful? The, the ground <laughs> one has extra plates and stuff on it. Yeah. The space one is the one, you know, yeah. since we saw it in space on the show. But it's yeah. essentially the one from the show with extra pieces on. Yeah. So with the costume unlock, you can remove the extra pieces and look just like the show. Yeah. Thanks, Magic Voice. There you go. All right. So we could do that. And we probably will. Uh, so, yeah. This is the, uh, this is the, the new... Um, blah, blah, armor for the rep. This is what you unlock for uh, getting high in uh, tier 5 in this one to get it? Yep, and yep. all three pieces. And all three pieces of the set, set will unlock it. Uh, that's pretty cool. It, um, as I can show you right now. Now, if I remember correctly, this guy um, is available in other POS pieces in uniform, but if you want to put it all together, you have to go into a separate slot for Burnham. Uh, I haven't played around with it to, enough to know for certain. Okay, I remember seeing that in an email. Let's find out. I actually out. just got it hooked up today. So. Okay, so there may be issues. Yeah. And uh, this is this is a part of the game that I do not understand very well. There's a lot going <laughs> yes, on Yes, this here. is the domain of uh, Ian. The, uh, let's see. Um, One of the, the faces artist. of the true end game. <laughs> Space Barbie. There are many aspects. So Let's if see. you are modifying your primary slot, you can't use armor in that slot. Copy that. Thank you, chat. At first I was like, whoa, this guy's, looks, this guy's face looks completely different. Then I remember I couldn't see his face a minute ago. So let's see. Uniform. I assume under jacket tight. Jeremy, you're the one who put this together the first time. Sorry. I think I need to come over here. Yeah, you probably, you might do. It's the yeah, it's that. Uh, you have to be using. You don't have the data that I just hooked up this morning. That's why it's not oh. modifiable. Okay, let me exit without doing anything then, so yeah. we don't lose so this. We, we don't have uh, on this build. You don't have the capability of modifying. It. Got it. Okay, so yeah. it will modify. You will be able to change all the colors and hook right. it up in pieces with other with other yes. things. But um, it's uh, right now we're going to be stuck with this look, and that's fine because it yeah. looks great. All right, oh, so I'm, I'm a disembodied arm. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> cool. Oh, I can see that now. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> oh, it's doing like a little jazz hand thing. <laughs> oh, the time, the time delay is going to make this commentary very confusing for the people. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. the jazz hand. It's, it's inside the, it's the <laughs> hand. Uh, Ronald Jackson Jr. says it looks like the Power Rangers Zeo suit. Uh, I must agree with this. 
Right. So as you can see, we've already bah, achieved bah, bah, tier bah, six bah, bah, in the bah, bah, Discovery Legends. Uh, stronger than before. I know you were singing the original and not the Zeo theme song, but this is what happens. I don't know Power Rangers things. No, I but it's okay. Tried. You actually did sing the Zeo theme song by singing the original theme song because the original goes into the anyway. Never mind. That's that not makes this sense. is a Star Trek stream. We're not talking <laughs> yes. about that. All right, so They're completely different. Let's talk through what we're what you get at each stage of the uh, Discovery thing. So starting with. The Captain Traits, you get a Tier 1. What do these bad boys do? So, Irium's Augments, uh, like most of our reputation traits, they're mirrored between ground and space. Irium's uh, improves your resistance to damage over time and area of effect. Okay. So it's functionally the same as having like extra phaser resistance or something. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan just realized his boss is about to hit him with a chair. It's okay, keep going. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, it's the same as having like additional phaser resistance or plasma resistance, except for this applies to any damage type, but only if it's coming from a damage over time effect or an area of effect attack. Since area of effect includes things like warp core breaches and many, but not all, torpedoes, it should help out with the sudden mysterious deaths if people <laughs> choose to use it. All right, and then here's Tyler's memories. Yep, this one uh, is not mirrored between ground and space because there already is a space point-blank shot mechanic. But this is functionally similar. Um, the closer you are to the target, the more damage you do. So if you're in melee, it will do, will do ex extra more damage. It will, but it maxes out at around 9 meters, so shotguns, other things work quite well up close. And that's actually also true of the Burnham uh, set. If you don't choose to use the melee weapon on the Burnham set, it still works quite well with shotguns. Okay. Cool. This is also very thematic because in the show, the people that were closest to Tyler were the ones he hurt the most. <laughs> <laughs> also true of Burnham, if you think about it. Really true of just about everybody on the show, especially in season one. Mm. <laughs> Captain Pike didn't do that. That's feelings. about it. Feelings. Whoa, 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 feelings. I don't know that song. All right, Arium's Efficiency. Space version. Oh, okay. So it does. It just when you get to tier two, you get the space version of, yep. of it. All right, Saru's Grace. What does that do? So uh, applying control abilities adds a stack of Saru's Grace to your ship or yourself, depending whether it's the space or ground version, and they add damage and speed. So um, damage is not fantastic. It's a solid amount of damage, but it can't compete with, like, Cat 2 bonus damage type effects. But what it can do is give you speed, which is very difficult to come by, and it gives a fairly large amount of it, which makes running around on ground maps especially a lot more noticeable or uh, it, it, the bonus is a lot is very noticeable when running around on large ground maps. Okay. And in space, um, you can combine this with a few other effects from other pieces of content that are coming out around now, and other things from the <laughs> reputation <laughs> rep stuff. I can talk about other stuff. No, that's not so much. But um, if you want to, you can use these things to make your cruiser fly a little bit more easily and be a little bit more maneuverable. Oh, I yeah. just realized one of the things you can stack this with that's coming out soon, and I'm suddenly very happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Saru's Vigor. This is the ground version of what you just described, yes? Exactly. Okay. And so then Landry's Tenacity. Yeah, it's funny. For Saru's Vigor, uh, one of the things I pitched for the icon is Saru's hand squishing the uh, the drone, <laughs> but it turns out that's like that's a big ask that's for an icon. That's really hard to do like this it, big. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> in my head, it looks nice. It should be. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. not realistic. And Landry's tenacity, which um, outgoing critical hits cleanse a random debuff from you. This definitely plugs right into the Lorca set. And one of the things we wanted to do with this uh, reputation was when the characters worked well together on the show, we tried to make their abilities synergize well. And some of them, like Tyler, Tyler works well with both Burnham and Lorca, so he's a little bit between both worlds. Okay. And uh, Burn or, uh, Landry very much firmly in Lorca's camp, and so has a very crit-centric mechanic. Okay. All right, cool. Somebody pointed out that we actually did a flavor fail in the area because she was not resistant to Control's effects. Oh, we had to make this before we started oh that's a good two. burn, you guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We had like two Tear. episodes from TC. Yeah, with. no, that's probably worth clarifying. Is like how far away. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is this is like up through season one and like the first two episodes of season two or something. Yeah, like which that. is why you won't see any of the stuff. Uh, same thing with anything else we might be announcing this week. Um, uh, exactly. We'll contain some stuff from season two, but not. Uh, everything you might want to see from season two uh, because we hadn't seen it yet. Yeah. So, you know. And we didn't forget that stuff's there. We're, it's we know gone. about it. We, we'll get to it. There's a few things that there are like, was, oh, uh, that There was a lot of requests for that big old beam rifle that, uh, yeah. what's his name used, yeah. that uh, we hadn't seen yet when we designed certain things that we're announcing this week. Leland. Exactly. Leland, thank you. Why am I so bad with names today? 
All right, uh, Tyler's duality. Uh, he didn't have half his face be Klingon. Was that because of spoilers? Um, actually, both icons kind of touch on that. The first one is the top half of the icon is the Starfleet logo, but the bottom half is the Klingon Empire city. Oh, really? Or no, it's the other way around. The top half is the Klingon Empire, and the bottom one is like curved oh, in with yeah. like the Starfleet symbol. Oh, that's like a, a black badge. That's a dope logo. <laughs> is that? We need to put that on a T-shirt. Anyway, Joe sorry. did great work with these. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so this one is the space Tyler trait, but it's not a mirror of the ground one because Point Blank already exists in, in space. This one, like uh, Landry, works very well with Lorca, but this it also works well with the Stamets Tilly set because Tyler also worked with the like very well nicely with the quote unquote good guys, yeah. <laughs> the, the better angels of the show's nature. <laughs> Uh, so it combines the two themes, tanking and critical hits. Mm-hmm. The more hit points you have, the more crit you have. And it can give a very sizable amount of crit if you have a very tanky ship. Nice. Uh, I just saw somebody come in the chat, uh, probably from um, uh, the official share of this on StarTrek.com, asking what game this was. This is Star Trek Online. Uh, we are a uh, multiplayer online RPG that takes place about 30 years after Nemesis. Uh, and oh uh, tells the uh, story of the Star Trek universe um, after all the TV shows and movies that you know and love, and tying into Discovery pretty heavily right now. Which, I, let's continue talking about that. What does Landry's loyalty do? I am embarrassed. I thought I was developing for Uno. I'm a little confused. <laughs> um, but yeah, Landry's loyalty... That's why this says draw four, draw four, draw exactly. four. Exactly! It is the ultimate expression of power. No, uh, Landry's loyalty, <laughs> ground version of the space trait, uh, crit hits, cleanse a debuff. Nice. Okay. Tier 5 trait. Oh, this one I have to show off later, because this is... Yeah, it's a tethered non-baryonic asteroid. So, uh... You know that scene in the show (laughs) where they dragged an asteroid behind them to do something really cool? Just You just get to do that now. Take that, physics. Yeah. (laughs) That's that's what you get. (laughs) Yeah, it's a towed gravity well, more or less. It's an asteroid that pulls nearby enemies in, and the stretches and squishes that happen... Now, if you're wondering, developed. can you use this in combination with um, the console from the Bird of Prey uh, the that, that shoots a gravity well in front of you and drags enemies mm-hmm. in front of you, and the console from the Winter Ship that shoots out mm-hmm. chains and drags enemies behind you, all at the same time to become a personal gravity well whirlwind of death? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. you can. Please and do. And just to cap it off, drop a Badlands tornado right yeah, on Yeah, just right on top of yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. trash bag full of mines, whatever, yeah. whatever yeah. you're <laughs> <laughs> Several trash bags full of mines. Who we'll put the mines in the trash bag again? <laughs> <laughs> we have Starfleet issued tubes for this. Why are you using trash bags? They are lovely space tubes. They are highly iterated and ergonomic. <laughs> Miles O'Brien, in between getting tortured every other week, spent hours on this. The union will have your head. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so, um, tier six. We get access to the tier two versions of all of these lovely traits. Indeed. Uh, which is them, but more powerful. Uh, and then we get a new captain ability. So let's talk about that a little bit. What's the uh, what's the new captain ability? Oh, it's Here's the reputation list. flourish. Uh, when oh, you complete right. tier okay. six. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Though there is a new captain ability coming soon, we hope. Mm-hmm. It's currently on Tribble. It's on, yeah, it's on Tribble. It's not related to the rep, it. but yeah. is related to mine, so hey. Yeah. All right, well, let's look through the equipment and see what else we get. Um, the vanity shield we'll take a look at later. I assume Jeremy put it on the ship, but uh, if he did not, I will. Tour. All right, I'll put it on the ship then. Um, and then we have all of the armor and pieces you were talking about before. So this is the yep. armor. Tell us a little bit about it. This one comes in both uh, an armor and an Evo suit variety, and you can get either. Uh, and what it does is provides a pretty sizable amount of protection, just a lot of resistances of various formats, a big chunk of hit points, Crit chance, physical damage, run speed, and crowd control resistance. Nice. It's like if you like if throwing a brick through a window could be an armor. That's that what would this be is. this. <laughs> Unsubtle. Okay. All right. And then this is the EV suit version, not the Evo suit version, which is very different. Oh, mm, my mistake. <laughs> um, uh, so this adds. Uh, is that no? That's just the regular space jump. That's not a. That's not a space jump. That's for right, extravehicular so. operations in gotcha. your environmental suit. <laughs> for what Kerlin is telling you that he's here. Uh, well, all right. If the uh, vanity shield from this is different from the lockbox, it is. It yep. Is. Yes. It is. Yes, it is. Quite so. Uh, from which lockbox? Because from the from the lockbox one they asked. Mm, all right. Oh, because we did one with a previous lockbox that was a discovery theme. Right. Yes, it is different than that. Uh, okay. So uh, this mind meld device. Tell us about this. This is a bit of an oddball. This is the weapon from the ground set, and it goes in your weapon slot and unlocks a costume piece that's the mind meld device from season one where they're trapped in the nebula, or 
they're in the nebula trying to res rescue Sarek, who's trapped in the nebula. And uh, Tilly hooks up this sort of device to burn him to help her uh, contact him. Yeah. A little bit of a stretch premise, but the, the, <laughs> the idea is that they were never really able to adapt it to general use, but it's good enough for muscle memory, including Sumana reflexes, which is the Vulcan martial arts that Burnham uses to slap the hit points out of all of her enemies on the show. So using this is the equivalent of plugging into the back of your head and then saying, I know Kung Fu. Yes. Yes, <laughs> except for without the new animations. <laughs> um, so how this works is your normal ground attacks are unchanged up until the combo finishers. But all of the extra damage that comes from wielding a weapon is packed into that finisher. So that when you... And, and how combos work for people who aren't familiar with ground combat. Or you, melee combat and ground, anyway. Or, yeah, <laughs> melee combat, I should say. Um, sequences of three button presses deliver a combo. And they can't all be the same button. And it's between one and two. So, And then from there, they all just do different things. But if, as long as you're pushing some combination of one and two three times in a row you will execute some form of combo. And playing around with it, you'll get experience with which does what. But the overall theme is a couple of hits to set it up and then some kind of sweet finishing move that does an ungodly amount of damage. Actually had an issue happening in tests where Burnham would frequently slap people so hard they disintegrated. <laughs> and I had to uh, look into, figure out why this was happening because it... Uh, yeah, I've disintegrated people with my bot left before. It, it's yeah. an old bug, sir, but it checks out. <laughs> I mean, with the structural integrity fields presumably inside the armor, hypothetically, it is physically possible to hit someone so hard you overcome the strong force and just shatter their atoms. Now, how hard, hard would Burnham have to slap a chicken? In the <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like some monster math there, but yeah. yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. They uh, crit, because the set frequently interacts with expose and exploit, and because there are, is crit chance involved, uh, it's not uncommon to see 2 to 3k crits on some of the combo finishers once they're exploited and then you expose with a high damage finisher but this is six attacks over a period of time so the overall balance ends up being pretty reasonable and we can clock the dps against existing ground weapons but it hits very very hard in certain circumstances I'm very excited to try that out yeah. long-term parses aren't going to show these yeah. spikes mattering, right uh, no. they feel so good <laughs> <they do. laughs> and I, I got to talk a little bit extra about this item compared to... Like, this is going to be the thing I have to talk the most about of in the entire rep, but the Mind Meld device also has uh, replaces your Palm Strike because you're using your fist for your primary attacks. Palm Strike doesn't really serve a purpose in that world. So we've replaced Palm Strike with an ability called Engage where Burnham charges... Or you or yeah. whoever <laughs> charges... I'm just used to thinking... Burnham is not term. confirmed, by the way. I just saw that in yeah. chat. I, it, he's just... It got, turns he's out in that headspace. Yeah, you're... You're not Burnham, unfortunately. But, but the, or fortunately, the it depends on your point of view. Is yeah. fulfilling that. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But you, you charge at an enemy and close the gap very quickly, which solves one of the ear flicks of melee combat, yep. being that you have to constantly be running around. And then once you get to them, if it's the first time you've charged them, within, like, I think 30 seconds, they get rooted for six seconds, which would give you time to execute a combo or two. And the charge ability has a very low cooldown, so you shouldn't have to be constantly managing your WASD to get into range. My, uh, my combo brain just kicked in and said that I can probably use this with the uh, Zenkethi armor to charge across the field, backhand someone 10 feet away, and then immediately charge it and root them in place. You could. That yeah. sounds great. They actually share the animation, even. <laughs> um, not the VFX, of course. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a Sparta kick combo. It's like 2 1 2 where you punt someone away and expose them. So if you get up, root them, punt them away and expose them, and then charge back in and use an exploit combo finisher. Oh, Ooh, so good. That feels nice. All it right. feels nice. Uh, so tell us about the hostile environment shield. <laughs> so uh, this is set up to dovetail with either the shotgun or the melee fist version of the set, depending on what you want to engage with. Um, but it, when the shield is broken, it exposes and slows nearby enemies, and it improves your physical damage and, uh, when the shields aren't full and your run speed when the shields are full, under the reasoning that during combat you will pretty much never have full shields. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. All right, so now we've got Sorry, some kit modules. Asking what you're saying, saying about the shotgun. There's not a shotgun in the set, right? There no. is no shotgun in the set, but we felt that there was a space for a set that improves physical damage, and um, that allows it to work well with some of the uh, like the the shotgun, the the new. Uh, I forget if we call it Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, I don't think. Do, do we call it like a? Yeah, whatever it is. That the Tommy gun. Oh, it's, yes. it's functionally a Tommy gun. I don't know if that term is <laughs> what we use. Uh, and then the sniper rifle. 
Plus, cool. I think Lex knives are physical. There's a there's a few pretty sweet ranged physical weapons. Uh, Jeremy, is this set up so that I can claim these kit modules uh, with the control click on on engineering? Is that a you thing I can do? You should already have the kit modules equipped. I have two of them equipped. There are there five. Are only two. Two. Oh, I'm thinking of something else. I'm there. There are only two. You're very right. Yes. We are not releasing any others that we have so far announced. Definitely exactly. not. There's no nothing else There's with kit no modules in it that I've spent three days taking screenshots for coming anytime soon. No big old heap of kit modules in this reputation. All right. Well, let's talk about the kit modules by showing them off because uh, we've done a lot of talking. Uh, but let me just make sure there isn't anything else in here. Da -da -da, kit modules. Yep. And then there's some consoles. We'll show that off in space. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so let's dive in to punching some fools. All right. With a punchy hand. Uh, do I have my palm strike or engage equipped? No. I yeah, it's under your three. Under my it's three. Oh, it's you need three. a target. Okay. Yeah, yep. That makes sense. All right. These guys are good I'm guys. Anxious well, to watch you punch Good things. guys. Well. It's really a moral, like, moral gray area. Play the arc. You'll find out. <laughs> no, they are the best guys. Listen, I play a necromancer in D and D, so like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, not off squeamish. board, but I'm not on board either. <laughs> okay, that was dope. <laughs> Can you stack this with other melee weapons like Sinkatsi gloves? Uh, I I don't know if anybody noticed how much I just murdered that dude with my fists, but <laughs> oh, this feels really good. <laughs> this feels way better than than uh, punching. <laughs> <before> <laughs> There's one of the three K hits. Yeah, clonk. Okay, I'm about to die because yeah. I'm bad at this. Yeah, no bridge officers, not much yeah. in the way kits. Yeah. And Are your traits slotted? Just the ones from the rep, nothing else. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, well there'll, be, there'll, be, there'll be a bit of The point gets across. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the three-piece set bonus heals you and reduces your kit cooldowns every time you complete a full combo. Okay. So you definitely want to be trying to do one two one 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 two. those yeah. kind of things. Yeah, just like you were doing. You I were playing the right okay, way. Okay, good. I was going to say, I was trying. But it does yeah. help you survive, but, yeah, I mean, it's only If there's help. a billion dies shooting at you, yeah, you're not going to be able to run into yeah. uh, minor assaults. There's supposed to be five of you. There's just yeah. the one right now. Uh, okay, so, uh, so oh, this is Greg, tell me about the gravity pull device. So well, this hold is on, let me try to answer this, because they were oh, asking sure, about uh, additional melee weapons. Can it stack with those? Um, no, we you can only have one weapon equipped at a time, and this does still fill a weapon right. slot, even though it's not giving you weapon Though Currently stuff. in the game, having the weapon in your off slot completes the set bonuses, so you can yeah. have the mind meld device in an off slot to fill out the set, and then use uh, whatever melee device... You know, Emperor's so Sword, in, whatever you're using. in that regard, yeah. you can get the set bonuses and still use the yeah. Sakatsi gloves if you like. Yeah. Absolutely you yeah. can. You just won't have these mount monster finishers because that's part of the weapon. Exactly. Uh, Wanted War 7654 says he thinks co uh, melee combat needs combos without tech. Uh, combos are in every melee combat you do in the game. It's just that these ones are different mm -hmm. um, and uh, slightly, slightly better punching. Um, for example, I knock people on their butts all the time with my uh, Nakul Assassin Sword. Hmm. Oh, I just remembered I didn't give you any skills. That's going to be a significant nerf to your ground. Uh, Ooh. Also, no specializations. <laughs> I just gave you all the rep gear. That's it. You will be fine. Me any any God skills. Mode and go kick. People. Yeah, you're right. I'm just just mode. run in and punch, punch out all their blood. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Thanks. Character I don't recognize. <laughs> you got this. Ugh. Uh, oh, you got he, stopped by the rock. He backed away from my punching. Why would he do that? Uh. <clears throat> yeah, the three button is, is very really necessary. Yes. I'm used to three being my That like, said, we're not done tweaking it, and there's a mad science experiment I intend to do as soon as I'm out of this meeting, actually, to try to solve that issue you just encountered. What is what is your mad <coughs> science experiment? No, nah, I don't want to go into details in okay. case it, you know... Fails miserably yeah. and we all die. It's so. really more mad engineering. There's no yeah. mad control group. All to right. Oh, okay. Joke all right. Good, good, good. SMBC. <laughs> uh, all right. So, let's talk about these kit modules this time. Okay. Now that I'm not dying. So, the gravity pull device. This is based off of the uh, same episode with the non-baryonic asteroid. Yep. Uh, you sort of swoop things into melee, and the farther they fly, the more damage they take. And if you dump them all at your feet, it makes it easy to circle kick them or whatever you're looking to do. Yeah. All right, and what is the other kick? <laughs> There's the... <laughs> I disintegrated there it. There it is, yeah. All right, Mug's time device. Oh, this I thing. have activated it. Oh, I have to be able to die to make mode. this work. Well, just let him kill you. Oh, well, I have to turn off God mode for that right. to work. So Mug's time device does a bunch of different things um, in two main categories. The first is you activate it. Last 90 seconds. If you die during that time period, it takes you back to where you were when you activated it at full health. 
and you lose all aggro Which and everything. You will see very soon. Those in this case, I think you activated in the middle of a crowd. I did, enemies, so I so. will definitely get killed. <laughs> They'll get mad at you again, but it looks like they haven't noticed yet. Hey guys! Hey, it's, wait! It's, uh, it's that guy. We <laughs> We're in a different timeline. Oh no! <laughs> oh wow! I just one punched that guy. One punch! You only needed the one, but you used the first two to build up the second one. That's true. You needed to get up your mojo. Yeah. Crunch. Um, but yeah, so that's what the mud time device does is one part of its thing. But the other part of its thing is during that 90 seconds when the buff is on you, anytime you use a kit module, it reduces the cooldown of other kit modules you have equipped. This is because oh. as like a save myself from death thing, taking up a whole kit module slot with just saving yourself from death, we felt wouldn't be that appealing to players who are ideally planning around not dying in the first place. Yeah. yeah. So this allows you to sort of make back some of the other uh, slots. But on top of that, Mud didn't just equip his device so that he would be safe. He equipped his device so he could go do some nonsense. And the, the feeling of like turning it on so you can go do some shenanigans is, I think, important to the feel of the yes. device. Well, who, There's a part of both dares attack that are hoping that this will actually enable a little more ground wizardry. If mm -hmm. you want to spam some crazy powers, kit modules, and stuff like that. Absolutely. Right. And if you happen to die in the process, you won't. Yeah, oh, uh, I saw some questions on the thread about this too, where people were wondering if it would brick certain encounters. Uh, there's some uh, dark magic happening behind the scenes that if you move to a different map region, uh, it will cancel the power, so you won't get revived outside of a boss chamber or something like that. Okay, so I'm about to get killed here, and I activated up the, this hill, yep. and yep, I'm fine. Everything's fine. What there might still be bugs with it. Like if there's like a door that closes and won't open again, I could see that causing an issue. So we might have to be careful with it uh, in certain boss encounters. So this guy is immune to being flank punched, but I kicked him in the back of probably, the head and that worked. Chat can probably tell me if there's a fight like that, right? There's, Where a, there's, there's a board queen fight that I think is a lot like that. Has that as a mechanic. Once yeah. you engage, you, you need to be locked out if you die. Oh, so yeah, that fight. I remember that fight very well. I think we can fix that, though. Yeah, that's that's fixable. Can you fix it so that you don't get <laughs> locked out if you die? <laughs> That's not a fix. <laughs> That's a fundamental you change. Fix right? for you, Mike. Don't die. Uh, but I'm so yeah! bad at that. I disintegrated a guy with my fist. Uh, I wish we could keep that in. I really like that interaction. <laughs> it feels so good to slap someone so hard their atoms come apart. But it's just not. <laughs> it's not a thing. Yeah. Um, Tim Parker Chambers uh, has a question. Uh, is there okay. any chance? Uh, this is actually probably not one you could answer. Is there any chance of switching the code to enable disable visuals? With ship gear such as impulse engines, shields, etc., so that will default the visuals off when they're installed rather than default on and need to be disabled. I don't think we'd ever make that the default because the idea is you put on the equipment and you get the cool new thing you wanted right away. But um, it may be something we could put in as a menu option someday. That's a technical question. We'd have to ask our programmers if, how possible that is. Um, okay, so why don't we head to... Um, Jeremy, what's a, what map did you want me to go to for fighting Badlands? In space? Yeah. Yeah. M U underscore B Z, I believe it is. B Z. B Z. Yep, there it is. I just kept hitting X, so that's hard because mm. that's not a map. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get one without Z next time. Hmm. You end up in X Zone, Star Fox 64. Yeah. Uh, there's at least one command specialization ability that counts on disintegrating opponents, so please be careful about removing instances of vaporization. That's inaccurate. It cares about exploiting opponents, mm. which usually vaporizes, Yeah, mm. but not always. Yeah, we don't intend to change the behavior for anything other than specifically this Burnham set anyway. So, um, Poriant wants to know if only Discovery-themed uh, TFOs will give Mark for this reputation at release. Um, uh, that and the random cues and he's yeah that lets you red pick alerts from any lets mark. you pick marks things like that yeah. um, will have discovery marks. Uh, otherwise, the ones that will give you discovery marks are defensive starbase one, peril over pavo, uh, operation repost, and pavo dissension. Um, also, Bob's right. What battle the binary stars? No, that's not coming back as a TFO. I see. I yeah, see. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yes, we know. Thank you. Uh, okay, what ship have you got on here first? Have we told players the reason for that? It's because we might want to rerun it as an event. We have not told players the reason for that, and I specifically didn't say that because maybe well, we were, maybe we wouldn't. Now we know. We <laughs> might. We might. If we end up not, we'll just put it into the disco wrap. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about space stuff. What kind of cool space stuff do we got here, buddy? All right. Well, there's two different sets to talk about. Whichever one you scroll to first looks like... The Lorca set. All right. 
Ah, I actually just buffed this today. Um, someone on the forums made a pretty convincing case, so the shield penetration skill there is roughly four times what you're seeing now. Oh, wow. Wanted a nice chunky number. <laughs> but yeah, this is Lorca set, so it's all about critical hits. Um, this is a tactical console, which is a bit of a departure for reputations, but uh, it introduces a lot more interesting choices than if you could just slot it in any console because it contains a whole ton of crit and damage buffs. Um, on its own, it's mainly a stat stick, lots of crit, lots of weapon damage, and shield pen, which is more different weapon damage, kind of inverted a little bit. Uh, the number you're seeing on the screen would work out to about 1.5% shield pen, which is why we were pretty confident in being able to quadruple that number up to 6-ish percent shield pen. Nice. Um, but it really starts to sing when you combine it with the other items in the set. Uh, the dual heavy beam bank is the first dual heavy beam bank in the game. Uh, in this case, it's a wide angle dual heavy beam bank, which this build does not appear to have yet. Yes, it is. Right there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, I have to update the text and the reputation. Yes. Uh, but it is a wide angle dual heavy beam bank. Yes. Exactly. And not a wife angle, as some people uh, this red. <laughs> <laughs> this is in reference to a specific typo. <laughs> I hate all of you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, we actually encountered an interesting double bind with this. We wanted to make the item special by introducing a new weapon type, but that appeals to the kinds of players who are like very high-end, technical-oriented players who are interested in new categories of weapons, and the weapon didn't really have a lot special going on with it other than being a new sort of weapon. So we're actually also intending to add like a little something to it, something that okay. triggers on critical hit likely. But yeah, this is a dual wide angle heavy beam bank that hits harder, shoots a little slower. Overall DPS is a bit up from a normal dual beam bank. Cool. And it looks great. Like this whole set, they knocked it out of the park with the visuals on this set. It looks and feels great. Now just to check, you know today is Wednesday and this comes out on Tuesday, right? <laughs> 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 yes, but we're responding to feedback. <laughs> it's true. The players couldn't give that before they knew about it. That's true. Also, Unless they had Mud's time device, but that hadn't shipped yet. No, so. so there you go. Some of these it will take them a, some time to earn. So, yeah. uh, they might so it's be, okay. Not be able to get it. Um, the Badlands lighting is worse than I thought it was. So okay. Can we move to a different map? Sure. <laughs> we're not actually looking at anything, but we will when we're done That's with fine. that. Yeah. People are already mm -hmm. complaining about the lighting, though. Yeah. So That's reasonable. Uh, Where do you want to go? Map move to DYS. Um, Contested, I believe it is, or AZ to contested. Yep. Yeah, Badlands lighting ain't great. Uh, what beam style does the heavy beam bank have? We will show you by equipping it on our ship. I think it may already uh, be I, equipped. I guess I won't spoil it. <laughs> Jeremy, did you did you equip it on the ship, or do I have to yeah. unlock it? Okay, good. Good job. Yeah, there's a it's phaser. It's the top left most weapons. Yeah. Yeah. And then the alternate energy type is disruptor at tier 6. Yeah. And I put a normal dual beam next to it, so if you want to show them side by side to see how they're visually different. Okay. That. Should I wait to talk about the last item? Or uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, so the last thing is the uh, dark matter laced quantum torpedo. Which is a which really cool. Which also had a little piece of feedback implemented by the players, or uh, suggested by the players. In the thread, someone pointed out that the wording of the lore part of the tooltip implied that Lorca had hand collected all of the dark matter pellets used in all of the torpedoes. <laughs> I read that. Which I found that was very funny to me. But uh, first made collected made by was. Lorca is now the, the made it clear verbiage. It was all by his interns, not him himself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interns, <laughs> underlings, and disposables. Uh, uh, but yeah, the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo applies a stack of Dark Matter Dissolution to its target when it hits. And if you crit hit them, it applies two stacks. And that deals physical damage over 20 seconds to its victim ship. And if the ship dies while the dot is on it, it disintegrates the same way Burnham did in the Magic to Make the Sanest Men Go Mad episode, which looks so good. Ooh, it looks good. All right, so here are the dual heavy beam bags firing. Beep, the beep, phaser beep, ones, beep, I think, beep. I assume. So you get nice purple Discovery-style beams. They're maybe do, more bluish, actually, but... Do they get to hear the audio, too, or just... Uh, the, no, oh, It's got a nice bassy thump to it. Well, let me let me try. If we get a terrible echo, let me know, guys. Yeah. And it's going to be like a giant spam fest <laughs> of, you know... <laughs> <all purple. laughs> yeah. There goes the Dark Matter Torpedo flying off into space. We're going to try and kill this thing with a Dark Matter Torpedo. Um... Hold on, hold on. Yeah, it doesn't have to get the kill shot, it just has to die when the damage over time effect is on the ship. Yeah. Firing it. I'm so used to flying my pilot ship that I was almost like uh, trying to back up. Uh, I just got one. 
That looks like it is gonna take it a while. Does that, that is gonna take a while? I don't think I'm gonna kill. Yeah, this kill target. Okay, let me fire a torpedo at it again first. Yeah. Oh, each time you apply the dot, it refreshes all the stacks on the dot. Okay. Did you put an anti-turn rate on this ship? No, but you have no skills. <laughs> yep. Mm. This is not, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this is not representative of Starship Combat and Star Trek <laughs> Online. I will maybe bust out my zippy ship in a minute just to... Uh, let me see. Selected. Damage. And there it goes. Disintegrating Ooh. into nothingness. Oh, yeah. That was cool. I'm going to stick a torpedo on my ship that don't normally use torpedoes for that. Probably. Yeah, just for that. At least until, you know, for a while. This <laughs> sound is cool. So I hope it's not drowning myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they can hear. The, they're hearing yeah, all of this. Hear it. It's a lot of. Uh, what is that? Uh, yeah. 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 Um, okay. Cool. So, uh, what else we got to talk about? Now that we're invincible, I can just sit here getting shot at. What else we got to talk about in this space? We side? may want to disable the sound before. It oh, good idea. Before it makes us all go mad. Yeah. And then we'll come back later. Okay. So um, that's the Lor well, the Lorca set bonuses, right? Oh, and I it forgot is. to talk about the Burnham set bonuses. Well, that's because we haven't talked about the Burnham set yet. We specifically yeah, skipped no, it all. Yeah, that was the ground set. Yeah, that was the ground set. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, so what was so, the Burnham set bonuses? Uh, quick rewind. Burnham set's three-piece mm -hmm. bonuses. Completing a combo gives you 20% of your health back and 10% of your kit module cooldowns back. And the two-piece bonus is whenever you exploit an enemy, they get reduced physical resistance for a period of time, which should work just as well with shotguns as with this. And that'll work on combos that aren't even the combo of your... Uh, exactly. Like with, the, with the mind meld device. So if you're using a bot left, you can have all those yeah. three things on yourself. Yeah, though the two-piece doesn't have anything to do with combos. Just expose and exploit. Right. Um, well, you, but you can get the three-piece for having the mind meld device equipped but not using it technically. Absolutely you can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right, so what is the Lorca three Lorca piece? combo, or the Lorca... Set bonuses are the two pieces. Whenever you gain, a, whenever you perform a critical hit, you gain a stack of crit damage that stacks up to a pretty sizable chunk. I think it's like twenty or thirty percent crit D after okay. a while. Um, and the three piece bonuses: whenever an enemy anywhere near you falls below half health, you automatically fire a dark matter torpedo at them. Oh, nice! So that you can get ready to get that sweet animation yeah. on everybody. Mm -hmm. And the torpedo is reasonably quick. Uh, it's reasonably sensitive. It should reliably apply a torpedo to pretty much everything other than really small ships on TFOs. And if we see that that's not happening, we're fully capable of n nudging up the threshold to something more like 80% if they're not getting there on time. Nice. Cool. Uh, and you actually just saw that trait go off yeah. because uh, I didn't have uh, the torpedo on auto fire, but yeah. one fire out anyway. It does count as a torpedo for all relevant purposes. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so, uh, Lorca set bonuses. Is that what you're he he oh, did yep, talk about that. And the next set is a Stamets Tilly field modification. Yes, tell us about those. All right, so the Stamets Tilly set uh, is the tanking set, and as soon as we scroll to it, is that it's space, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's space. Okay, so it's this start this stuff. All right, yeah, the non-baryonic matter deflector. So this is the thing that's got the torpedo damage resistance on it. It has a nice chunk of tanking stats, and its special trait is that you get torpedo damage resistance based on your hull capacity. So the more hull you have, the more resistant to torpedoes your ship becomes. And that, just like the damage over time resistance on the Arium trait, uh, this applies to any kind of torpedo regardless of energy type, and works exactly the same as appropriate energy type normal damage resistance. Nice. Uh, real quick, the yes. set bonus dark matter torpedo, uh -huh. does it interfere or interact with normal torpedo cooldowns? I think the answer is no. Yeah, it does not it, it does not negatively interact with normal torpedo mechanics, but it does positively interact. So, so if you have spread on and trade activates, you'll get a spread of torpedoes? No, okay, no, so no. Part. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, what's a better way to put okay. it? <laughs> Basically, it counts as a torpedo for all damage purposes, so okay. anything that amps torpedo damage or cares about dealing damage with the torpedo, yes, but anything that's to do with shooting a torpedo, uh, generally not. Um, okay. So, like, uh, special fire modes aren't triggered by it, cooldowns aren't triggered by it. Okay. If if there's no a, firing arc restriction. It can come out from whatever... And if you have any sort of trait that says when you fire a torpedo, something happens, this will not trigger it. Yeah, Got exactly. Because you're not firing it. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, the Mostelio Wave Impulse Engines. Tell us about these. All right, so this thing, uh, when you are out of combat, it gives you a bunch of bonus engine power that moves to bonus shield power when you get into combat. If memory serves, I cannot... Yes, that is exactly <laughs> what that does. Um, so kind of similar yeah. to the ground set, where when you're in combat, you get the bonuses you need. When you're out of combat, you get the bonuses Exactly. You need. Yeah. Maneuverability out of combat, tanking within combat. Great. Though I think the ground set was damaged, but functionally similar. Yeah. 
the mycelial harmonic matter antimatter core. Mm. So this thing has the uh, it's the derived from the extra shield power core warp core type and works off of your shield power. Um, the tooltip looks a little interesting there. <laughs> But yeah, it gives you increased hull capacity based on your shield power. So okay. as long as you keep your shield power cranked up, you'll get a lot of extra hull cap. Nice. And that updates fairly often, so as your shield power fluctuates, your max hull changes, but it's not going to interfere with your current hit points. Your current health should be the same percentage-wise. All right. And their review pending modified shield. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so this thing um, reduces enemy shield damage resistance, so enemy shield hardness, based on your shield power. Oh. And it improves your hull capacity just for having it equipped. So whenever you damage an enemy ship with your weapons, you'll uh, weaken their shields as long as you have this thing equipped. An amusing story about this thing, um, there was an unreleased piece of, or a piece of content that we haven't yet announced that I was working on trying to figure out why on earth it was crashing my server every time I tried to test it. Uh -huh. And I was over it again and again. I eventually had to call in programmers to help. And they, they helped me track the bug back to Tilly's Review Pending Modified <laughs> Shield, which has... Uh, yeah, not yet pay, past uh, safety standards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, okay, so uh, what is the set bonuses for those? Okay, so the two-piece bonus is uh, I think nothing is lost forever, and it gives 120% in combat uh, hull regeneration, and hull regeneration is based off of hull capacity. And we actually had to nerf it to 120 because the original pitch was for 160, and we were finding that our test ships were just not taking damage anymore. So it is a very sizable amount of hull regen. Um, it's not a mechanic players normally interact with, so it might be difficult to form a gut assessment for how effective it'll be. And when you look at the stat, if you're not in combat, it'll show it per minute, and that's your out-of-combat regen, which this is like a drop in the bucket for. But you lose all of that when you get into combat. So that's a long and complicated way of saying it's a lot. It's a lot of hull. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Why At can't I hold all of this hull? <laughs> exactly. How, co how come your developer lets you have all of this hull? No, uh, yeah, it, it, as long as your ship is tanky initially, you're going to find a tremendous amount of hull coming in. And then the uh, three-piece bonus is whenever you damage an enemy for the first time each combat, you will cause an uh, arc of mycelial lightning to leap from your ship to their ship and deal damage to them based on your hull capacity. Oh, nice. So the more hull capacity you have, the more extra punch you'll get up front. Okay. But the four piece is the power of math. And this is... Ooh, do you have this equipped? I really want to show, uh, show I, the people this. This is an active ability. It's an active ability? I think should I should be, have yeah. it equipped. Well, right? While okay. you're setting that up, a uh, question from the chat. That's on your bar already. Oh, Will that traits one? and other modifiers interact with the regen bonus? Uh, no. This, is, uh, this bonus isn't modified by other bonuses. Yeah. Well, except Space, in as much as hull capacity. Math. Yes. Like, hull capacity would improve it, but, yeah, yeah there's, there's other regen bonuses would add together but not interact. Uh, the ideal way to, to interact with this power, by the way, if you can do it, Matt, uh, Mike, is to... I almost called you Matt. Ah. To get a lot of targets. Yeah. Okay, so I, that's why I'm heading... I figured it was. That's why I'm heading back over to the yeah, spire I'll let you here. use it once, and then I'll explain all the crazy nonsense it did. Okay. All right, so there's one target. <clears throat> trying to get two more in range. Jeremy gave me no, sh no uh, skills, right. so... <laughs> Ooh, what ooh I did that was you. such an easy setup, but I, I let that one sail past oh, the plate. Oh, good. All know. right, so we got four, we got a couple of people around. All right, so what that thing did is you target an enemy ship, and uh -huh. it has a like burst radius around that enemy ship. It affects all enemy ships within a certain distance of oh, your primary This is why target. that little one just exploded immediately. Yeah, and its damage is divided by the number of targets you hit. So if you hit one target, all the damage goes into them. If you hit lots of targets, the damage is evenly shared. So it doesn't do very much damage if you hit a lot of ships. But for each ship that you hit, you get a permanent stack on yourself that improves your hull capacity. And the damage is based on your hull capacity. When you say permanent, how permanent are we Permanent talking? until map move. Okay. So until you leave the map, it's there. But if you have to, like, let's say you're in the TFO where you go in and out of the Dyson Sphere, you yeah. lose it when you transition. Um, but otherwise, it will stay. And there is a cap. You can only hold, I think, 25 or 30, something like that, stacks. But you can get uh, up to 60% additional hull capacity from this. And how the idea is that you begin the fight typically fighting lots of smaller ships, harvesting your hull capacity, and then when the boss ship shows up and you want to use your single target form, your damage is maximized. Okay, that time I saw the equations in the air, and that's hilarious and wonderful. <laughs> There's a lot of math happening with this ability. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
And we yeah, the visual is great ship. too. There's like tractor it. beams pulling in pieces. Oh, that's, uh, Sir Boulevard that's mentioned good. that right now the uh, the the bonus we just yes. learned about this today is staying if, even if you remove the set. Fixed already. Yeah. Okay. But thank you, Reddit, for catching that. Good job, guys. All right. Uh, is there anything we haven't talked about yet from this set? Hmm. We've talked about space weapons. We've talked about ground weapons. You haven't activated the asteroid trait yet. Oh, uh, no, yeah, I have wanted, not. We wanted to have fun with that. Uh, let's see. It's called my seat. Non Non-Baryonic, I think. Yep. Okay, then you haven't equipped it. Um, oh, I thought I did. It might be like Toad Non-Baryonic. Like it might start with a different letter. Let's see. Tethered Non-Baryonic. There it is. Okay. Uh, let me. Actually, I don't need to make myself targetable again to do this. Let's just do it. Uh, all right, we're gonna f take the slowest turn in the history of man. <laughs> uh, quick question from the chat: Will we yes. get kit reengineering? I can answer that by just saying we don't know yet. But uh, I was looking into it not long ago, so no solid answer for you at this time, though. Sorry. You could always slot evasive maneuvers. I could, but that just seemed like it would take a while. All right, here we go. We didn't animate some. Oh, whatever. Oh, and then when they want to see the vanity shield effects. Yes, oh, yeah, that yeah. was the last thing. That I was makes sense. Do, don't worry. All right. Where's my asteroid? Did you push it? I did press the button. I don't see my asteroid. I'm seeing the enemy ships getting. Yeah, people are getting tied in. All right, there is a bugged with it. There is a really cool effect where you actually do see the asteroid getting pulled along behind you. Um, part of me is wondering if it's. Like clipped like in here? Fired the asteroid at the end. Yeah, of <laughs> it looks like the asteroid got tethered to the enemy ship somehow. Oh, Try okay. clearing so your target and reusing it. Okay, hold on. Like, don't target anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there it is. Yep. But and it's it's floating in space, not tethered to me away. at all. What's going on with that? That is not how it worked when I took screenshots yeah. of it a few weeks ago. So that's a new bug. Good thing we tried it, and good thing players can't get this for a few weeks at least. So. We'll fix it before you get it. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what's going on there. That oh, is interesting. I'll find that out. All right, so that is going desk. to be behind your ship when we actually fire it, not yeah. drawing people away. Uh, <laughs> although it is interesting drawing people away. Uh, it's not the intended ability, so it'll be it'll be doing something different. Um, <laughs> I can't even figure out how it would do that, so that, that'll be fun. Uh, KelMG96, to answer your question about Kelpian boss, we honestly don't know. Um, the, the honest answer is we thought something different was happening with the Kelpian race uh, uh, than actually happened in Season 2. Um, and so uh, higher members of the STO uh, team than, uh, than us are meeting with CBS as we speak. Uh, and so we're hoping that's one of the questions that will come up, but uh, I don't know. Uh, we, we do know how deeply you all want to play Kelpians, and believe me, I do too. We also know how delicious they are. One day, one day someone will mention the Kelpian race without a joke about how our what about <laughs> Captain Giorgio... Yeah, what about a Kelpian triple? <laughs> That's a good idea. We should do we should do a Kelpian triple that like it's a peaceful peaceful triple, and the first time you pet it, it's things fall off and it becomes angry, and they grow <laughs> back and it becomes peaceful again. And then you can pick those up and turn them into a food item. Yeah, there you go, there you go. And, <laughs> and then the, the and then a triple eat those and get more Kelpian. This is going to end with my T-shirt cannon, isn't it? Like the, <laughs> I want a triple T-shirt cannon that you can like. I want that at STLV. I want it to be a real thing. I want us <laughs> to load triples, triples into it. They, clearly, you've never been to STLV. <laughs> there are so many real triples. Uh, all right. Well, cool. Um, let's fly away from combat here. Can I do the F2 fly away? Yeah, okay. Get out of there. Vain shield time. Uh, look at the vain shield. How are you still shooting at me? I'm very far away. Yeah. Uh, it was just bullet. Bullet not shoot at you. Bullet is shot at you. Okay, so this is Tilly, so we'll activate this one first. So like Nor pointed out, I'm glad we came to this map, because uh, some of the Voth repair themselves after death, but they've been disintegrated. Oh, interesting. So we're going to figure out a way to deal with that. Oh, <laughs> I wonder what that would do. They'd come back invisible right now. He was noticing it on the stream. I, oh. saw, so, I saw one of them turn invisible earlier. Yeah. And I was going to ask, like, is that... Do they have some kind of stealth mechanic I don't know about? No. All right, so this is the effect of the vanity shield. Um, it is one of our more subtle effects. Um, do you think it would look better in space than it does here? Possibly, um, it's, it's really iridescent. Yeah, it's, it's a very iridescent. Uh, let me, I'm going to take you to one of my favorite maps if I can. Uh, FX. Is it more noticeable on non-discovery ships? 
It might be. I, st- I did notice it when I was taking more when I was taking the, screenshots the of other ships. and more featureless the whole. Yeah. The more it kind of pops. But it gives you a kind of a cool soap bubbly effect uh, uh, over your ship. Inspired by the, the the whole visuals that were seen on the Glen after it had gone through its uh, torsion, its helical torsion. Um, yeah. So it's it's lighting dependent as well. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody wanted to know if we could share the rep crate contents. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we yeah. should talk about those. I uh, some of them. We're actually pretty happy with those. Um, okay. So we've got uh, basically a big panoply of different kinds of consoles split into two different types. Pax consoles and Bellum consoles. So like Peace and War. Okay. Um, the Peace consoles have a uh, bonus to hull capacity in addition to their other effects. And the War consoles have a bonus to crit chance in addition to their other effects. Um, pretty simple, but combined and spread out through a bunch of different console types, that gives you the ability to slot for tanking in slots that can't normally provide tanking, or slot for damage in slots that normally before can only you, indirectly provide before damage. Before you move, Mike, uh, yeah. I might have just turned off the visuals. No, I just turned them on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, what is it? Uh, KFR. Yeah. And then there's a set of different types of consoles available. Oh, no, uh, the other board. neat twi- tweak on them is the uh, they prov- there are some that provide a um, uh, bonus to all weapons of a certain type, like all torpedo damage or all beam damage. Historically, those consoles haven't been very competitive, but we crank the damage up on those a little bit relative yeah. to where they normally are. Um, someone men- asked about the um, uh, mission hails that people are getting when they log into the game. Uh, we made a change recently to the mission journal uh, so that you could access any story arc in the game, mm-hmm. uh, which is a good change, but uh, unfortunately it's meant that you're getting a lot of auto hails. Um, there is a setting in the menu where you can turn auto hailing off. Um, mm-hmm. So if that's really bugging you, uh, go into the menu. I think I can show you where once we've loaded it up here and just turn auto hailing off. Uh, but we are aware of it and we are looking at finding a way to have the best of both worlds. Part hey. two. <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah, this is the new menu screen for Rise of Discovery. Spoilers! <laughs> Thank God we'd already announced Lorca. <laughs> there was there was a couple of weeks where well not a couple of weeks, but there was like a week where Lorca was in game. Um but we couldn't uh Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. There you go. Now you can see it. Nice. Um yeah, I found it looks the best when you're looking at the shadow of a ship. Um but <laughs> Especially a white ship like this, uh, but um, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? When Lorca was in the game. Oh the yeah, game. we had like a week. We couldn't talk about it. We couldn't show him off, and so there was this, this all like, wait, do we? Can we show that screen when we're on the stream? Can we? <laughs> we move around this thing? Uh, all right. So then. And then there's a uh, the vanity one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. I am Velafair. Boop, which is actually way more visible and gives you a sort of purpley, orangey sheen, yeah. which is neat. This one looks a little Splatoony, in a good way. I like Splatoon. You zoom in a little bit more, because folks are saying that the uh, the bit rate of the stream is not great for them in some circumstances. Ah, it makes it why is it flying? Even backwards? harder to see. There you go. Yeah, it's like a oil slick, like yeah. a see-through oil slick. Yeah. Oh, what they actually said was that I was streaming with three pixels. Thank you for, <laughs> for uh, filtering that. Sure. <laughs> uh, we can't all be as uh, vocal as, as right. chat. Huh. As, uh, our, our oil splits? Our <laughs> oil splits. <laughs> oil splits. That's better than what I was going to do anyway. Yeah. Somebody said, well, oil be. That's, oil that, be. that's great. All right, nice. cool. Well, that is... The Discovery Legend Reputation. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, and John, thank you for joining us. And Jeremy's disembodied voice, thank you for joining us. Yeah. And arm. Ah, it's cousin it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for having us. You've got yeah. a very split setup here. I'm glad that I. <laughs> cool. <laughs> all right. Well, folks, uh, thank you for joining us as well. Um, we will see you next week uh, when Rise of Discovery will be out, and we'll be doing some questions and answers about that, and uh, maybe showing off some stuff that we're announcing maybe tomorrow. If they um, want to try this out as well, it's already on. Yeah, Tribble. it's all on Tribble. Uh, if you don't nice. know how to get to our Tribble test server, uh, there's a tweet um, and a Facebook post from our official account from yesterday that you can go through and find either yesterday or Monday. Um, but there's also. Uh, instructions on uh, the support website um, that you can just go to. Um, and that'll tell you how to transfer a character to Tribble and how to access the server and all that jazz. Um, other than that, uh, thanks, John. And I'll we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. <laughs> 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 bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye now. <laughs>
Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye now. Bye bye. You standing up even though the stream's not I'm over. I'm enormous. That's just a shot of 